Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining the Zerona Z6 Non-Invasive Fat Loss and Gut Health webinar with Dr. Rob Silverman, who is joining us from his clinic in New York. Um, as always with our webinars, um, if there's any questions throughout, please do pop them in the chat box and we will answer them at the end. So before I hand over to Dr. Rob, can I just ask someone or a couple of people to give me a quick thumbs up and make sure that you can see Dr. Rob and his slides. Okay, I've got a thumbs up, so I think we're good to go, Rob, over to you. Terrific. Thanks so much, Kate. Appreciate your time and help. Excited about sharing conversation about non-invasive fat loss, gut health, Zorona. Um, I've had the Zorona in my office for about 10 years. And uh, the interesting history to it is that it was started as a body, uh, body fat loss, but that's not really correct. It is a body contour. It has an over-the-counter FDA clearance for body contour, which means that anybody in my office can apply the laser here. I've seen a tremendous amount of fat loss. You're going to see inches, but the real secret sauce, which I was shocked at since I do a lot of functional medicine and we do a lot of testing for gut health, blood labs and the like was with the application of the Zorona, the tremendous change in the health of the gut, which is documented by quite objective measures, i.e. blood. Um, I have some new case studies that are, I'm also uh, formulating right now that have these in it. So um, understand that it's a two-fold approach. Approach number one, you're gonna lose inches. Approach number two, you're gonna change blood markers and you're gonna change gut health. And when you change gut health, it goes back to the concept and we'll talk about it, photobiomimics. So let's not belabor the point. Let's dig in and what's the problem? Well, the problem that we have here in the US and North America and the problem you have in the UK is number one, people consume too much sugar. The American number is simple. Uh, we're number one in the world in sugar consumption. You're number three. So if you will, in these health or adverse health markers, know that America is one and you guys are approximately three. The average American consumes 160 pounds of sugar per year. I'm sure if you look, you'd realize that your patients are consuming too much sugar. Sugar is deleterious to people's overall health. And within that sugar, the big evil this sneaky carbohydrate, fructose. And fructose is extremely damning to people's overall gut health. Taking it to the next step, wheat consumption. Gluten, gluten means glue. It sticks to the intestinal tract. It's very ruinous to overall health. The average American consumes 146 pounds of gluten. So when you combine sugar and gluten, it's almost a pound a day. When you realize that 60% of uh, your consumption of calories comes from what we call ultra-processed food. Look no further than sugar and wheat. Number three, caloric sweeteners. Caloric sweeteners increase the incidence of stroke and dementia by two to three times. Now, when we say caloric sweeteners, should really define it as artificial sweeteners. So something like stevia may come from a plant, may not fall into that category, where, as well as monk fruit extract. There's been a rise in diabetes. There's been this parallel rise. So people are getting heavier. They have an increase in diabetes. They have a more diabetes. They have an increase in obesity. Put the words together to make an interesting portmanteau. We have had a rise in diabetes. And that rise has been over each of the last five decades. Joint pain, back pain, osteoarthritis. We're all chiropractors for the most part. We're all musculoskeletal practitioners. Eight out of 10 people will come to, at some point have lower back problem. So you're going to see that most people have musculoskeletal failures. NSAIDs, medications, NSAIDs, non-steroid anti-inflammatories, Aleve, Advil, ibuprofen. You probably have different names for them there. Um, NSAIDs decrease pain, but impair healing. Nutraceuticals decrease pain, but promote healing. Which do you prefer? Medications. Uh, you're... you're you are over the pond and me over here in America, we're using without question too many medications, back pain. It's been shown that two lumbar adjustments over a 90 day period has decreased the need for pain medications by 55%. Toxins and stress, we live in a toxic and stressful world, no, never more stressful than now with the advent of COVID-19. And lastly, increased neurodegenerative disease. 
it has been postulated that by 2050, one in two people in industrialized countries will have some symptomology of neurodegenerative disease. Let's look at obesity facts worldwide. Almost 900 million people in 1980 were obese. It's grown 2013 to 2.1, and it's 2.1 billion, excuse me, and growing and growing and growing. There was 145% growth in the rate of obesity, 26% in children alone, and 3.4 million people die each year from obesity alone. But it's deeper than obesity. Majority of people are now over fat. Those who are under fat, under what they would call the average, so the average or the needed under fat would be 20% for a man and 30% for a woman. So in that range, about 14 to 28% people would be in that range. Under that would be about 10%. And over that over fat, billions and billions of people, up to about 75% of the world is over fat. Limiting weight gain could help reduce the risk of 13 various cancers. Sugar bust, talked about it before. We are consuming your, your country, your continent and mine, too much sugar. 30% chance of it, heightened chance of developing cancer among those who regularly consume large quantities of sugary drinks, soda pop. 37 are specific to breast cancer risk. The, the, Authors of this study truly hypothesized that the main factor was too much sugar. Sugar really has no nutritional value. There's also chemicals in the caramel coloring. So you're getting all those artificial colorings, some artificial flavor, even with sugar, additives and the such, and the pesticides in the fruit juice. And fruit juice is all fructose, that sneaky double-edged carbohydrate, and the pesticides in them, of course, these chemicals, um, the average person now in an industrialized uh, country will have three to five pounds of pure um, additives and pesticides per year. Globally, one in five deaths are associated with a poor diet. So everybody would benefit from rebalancing diets to eat optimum amounts of various foods and nutrients. A poor diet contributes to a range of chronic disease. The backbone of chronic disease, without question, is inflammation. Our patient bases, our friends, our families, the bulk of the people are on fire from the inside out. So is what we're really talking about all a preventable lifestyle disease? I use American numbers again, 42% of Americans are obese, 75% are overweight, 12% of Americans are metabolically healthy, six in 10 have one chronic illness, four in 10 have more than one chronic illness, and obesity increases the risk of death three times. All the above, again, the backbone, the anchor, the nexus is inflammation. COVID-19 did not do a good job for us. They called it the COVID-15, like the freshman 15 when you go to college. 42% of people gained more weight than intended over the last year. It was a 29 pound gain on average. So if you take me at my height, um, I'll use it in feet and pounds, slightly over six feet, about 185 pounds. If I gained that 29, that 30 pounds, I would go from a perfect BMI and a good body composition to morbidly obese. 10% of the people gained more than 50 pounds. 54% gained weight during these COVID restrictions because they exercised less, they snacked more, and they had increased snacking. So really, the Zorona 6 right now is really a hot ticket because it offers people so many opportunities to help them get started on their health promoting plans. I used diabetes before, I'm gonna use COVID-BCD now. COVID led to increased obesity, more obesity led to increased positive as COVID. Now we know that we're not wearing masks, we're not worried about all the different things, but we know COVID hasn't gone away. COVID's still out there in the air, Hopefully this form of COVID does not lead us down a path of long haulers. Just as an FYI, if anybody's interested in the long hauler protocols, Arconia has my laser long hauler protocol, and it also has my nutrition long hauler protocol. So Sherry Rogers once said, the road to health is paved with good intestines. So obviously it's a play on word, words. The road to health is paved with good intestines or good intentions, if you will. Let's take a deep look 
at my Dr. Rob's gut matrix. So we all talk about the gut. And what do we mean when we talk about the gut? We talk about the colon of the intestines, both the small and the large intestine. The small intestine is really a misnomer. The small intestine goes anywhere from 20 to 52 feet with an average per person of 22 feet. The small intestine is a single layer epithelial cell that has the thickness of a wet paper towel. When unraveled, covers the surface area of a tennis to a basketball court. The small intestine should not have a lot of bacteria. The bulk of the bacteria is in the large intestine. The reason they call it small, its diameter is maybe one inch when you compare and contrast the diameter to the large intestine, which is about two and a half inches. The small intestine, also interesting, has three main functions. It's to filter, if you will, three specific things. Filter and allow to get through the small intestine when it's in its pristine condition and go into the bloodstream. It's there to filter small digestible food particles, water, and vitamins and minerals. The best metaphor that I've ever heard for the small intestine is like a screen door. So again, that screen door, when it's in perfect condition, allows just air through it. So same thing with the small intestine. If it's in perfect condition, like the screen door, once again, it allows small digestible food particles, water, and vitamins and minerals. But when you have a hole in the screen door and it's perforated, it's like a leaky gut or the technical definition, increased intestinal permeability, things pass through the gut or the small intestine that shouldn't like most commonly large undigested food particles, viruses, bacteria, and pathogen. It has been stated that the first time the outside world meets the inside world is that when a food or an object goes through your digestive tract and gets through your small colon and small intestine and gets into your bloodstream. And that's where all havoc begins to change because your immune system goes on alert and you get an attack to those proteins, viruses, and bacteria that are going through that perforated leaky gut. So it's localized, systemic, and ultimately autoimmunity. So what stimulates that GI tract? Well, number one, food sensitivities. I'm a big proponent of testing for food sensitivities. Everybody's heard me say, I test for these sensitivities because from the time to ingestion to the time of symptomology, if you're sensitive to a food, is 72 hours. Obviously, all these things that we're going to talk about, yeast and fungal overgrowth, dysbiosis, an unleveling of good and bad bacteria. You need 85.1% of good bacteria to avoid dysbiosis, leads you down a path of leaky gut. You also have what we call tight junctions. Here's your gut, and when your gut is in its perfectly working order, it's semi-permeable. When it becomes too permeable, like I am now, that's leaky. When these gates open and are torn open, those are tight junctions. Those tight junctions are typically seen when we have a stress to a protein called zonulin. And there's something that you'll see it on my slide called LPS, lipopolysaccharide. Lipopolysaccharide holds gram negative bacteria on the inside of the intestinal wall, but it's hanging on the outside, sort of like ivy on the wall. When your gut is leaky, LPS comes through. LPS is an endotoxin. So when LPS comes through your gut and it's expressed in your bloodstream, it attacks different organs and it leads you down a path of autoimmunity. Leaky gut, higher incidence of toxic and chemical overload. 75% of toxins and chemicals go from the gut to the liver via the bloodstream. 25% go via the portal vein, ultimately leading to the bidirectionality of the gut and the liver. And too many toxins in the gut lead to liver dysfunction. Leaky gut, increased incidence of insulin, blood sugar problems, et cetera. Higher uh, incidence of uh, obesity, body composition, autoimmunity. I alluded to it before. I just had a patient yesterday come in and talk to me about their thyroid, and they didn't realize that the thyroid usually is attacked in an autoimmune fashion, typically from the gut. You also, for those who deal in musculoskeletal systems, leaky gut leads to an increase release of cytokines, like a cytokine storm, and MMPSs, matrix metalloproteinases. Cytokines are inflammatory markers, which actually lead to arthritis and joint pain, and MMPSs are digestive enzymes, the body's own proteolytic enzymes that are released at the time of injury that eat fibrocartilage, so they lead to soft tissue injury like discs 
and fibrocartilage. And lastly, the gut to the brain and the brain to the gut. It's bi-directional. They communicate in a millisecond. Whatever you do to your gut, you do to your brain. Whatever you do to your brain, you do to your gut. Leaky gut leads to inflammatory neurodegeneration in the brain and satiety, just to mention a few. Symptoms and the severity of COVID-19, some key points. COVID-19 may manifest with GI symptoms. The disorder of the gut-to-brain axis are typically a sequela of COVID-19. GI symptoms, loss of sense of smell, chest pains are very discriminant findings, and you'll see more severe GI symptoms associated with a more severe case or an acute phase of COVID-19. The results of this study without question confirm the occurrence of COVID-19 among COVID-19 long haulers. So one of the things I put in my long haulers um, protocol with the laser was to work with the gut and to work with the brain. Let's look at COVID's impact on the GI tract. Number one, COVID loss uh, shows a loss of diversity, a loss of beneficial bacteria, expansion of pro-inflammatory bacteria, an expansion of yeast, without question, a higher incidence of leaky gut, leaky gut and COVID, leads to an increased incidence of heart disease. LPS, the expression of LPS, triples the amount of heart attacks in a patient population. So when you look at severe COVID-19 complications, they are actually linked to gut barrier breakdowns. So an increase in tight junction permeability is seen in severe COVID. You see the steep increase in the release of zonulin. Zonulin, a protein enzyme. So you see the picture. Here again, in the middle is your gate. Zonulin comes up through the epithelial cell and pulls and pulls and pulls. I'm pointing right now at that red, uh, blue, and green. Those are structural proteins that get strained almost like strings and ultimately get pulled apart. So when zonulin is in excess, these specific markers like occluding B, uh, and B gluten and ZO1 are expressed, that shows that there's a structural compromise and the tight junction is now a loose junction. LPS is also increased in severe COVID-19. So the real takeaway here was that GI tract infections may prominently feature in long COVID and SARS-CoV-2 likely infects the GI tissue. So let's get into a little bit. Let's assess the antigen intestinal permeability because I use these markers as a backbone because they're so objective. And um, a lot of our, our colleagues, unfortunately, don't use them quite enough. So that said, here we're checking for lipopolysaccharide, that, gram um, that endotoxin that holds gram-negative bacteria on the inside of the intestinal wall. You have occludin and zonulin, two specific markers, zonulin showing the strain, occludin showing the ripping of the structure as depicted by the PowerPoint. And lastly, actomyosin, it's the ripping of the epithelial cell. People don't realize that when you have these compromises in leaky gut and tight junctions, you're also, you can have autoimmunity, but you can have autoimmunity at the gut level. And if you do, it's gonna take you just that much longer. And of course, you always wanna test for serum antibodies because antibodies, IgM, IgA, and IgG tell the story for the length of time that the body's being attacked or damaged. So let's get a little more granular. LPS, whether it's IgG, IgA, and IgM, IgA very much means there's a reoccurrence and it's at the secretory area, like a, mu a mucous membrane at the gut or the lung. <clears throat> IgM means that it's an early onset attack and IgG, the most prominent antibody, um, shows that it's for a period of time. Some of the things that will cause LPS to be expressed is gut dysbiosis, too much bad bacteria versus good bacteria. Remember, 85% of good bacteria not to have dysbiosis. Occludin and zonulin, IgG, IgA, and IgM, tight junction cell damage, stress, gut dysbiosis, and SADS. Those things that they take coming into our office, they can get in the pharmacy over the counter, is so damaging. Now, damage to the tight junctions takes a nine-month period to heal with a protocol. Actomyosin, that's the real, that's the bad jam, if you will. Endothelial cell damage, chronic cell dysbiosis, celiac disease, IBD, IBS, and SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. Systemic LPS is linked to multiple disorders, heart, immunomodulation, liver, brain, lung, metabolic disorders, thyroid, and of course, the joint. 
but I highlighted the brain because I wanted to highlight the gut to brain axis. Zonulin, I've talked about it before. I test for it in virtually all my patients. It's a protein that is synthesized in intestinal and liver cells. It's a key biomarker for intestinal permeability. It's only reversible regulator of intestinal permeability. Elevated levels of zonulin are associated with autoimmune, adult glucose intolerance, celiac disease, inflammatory bowel, asthma, non-celiac gluten sensitivity, RA, multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes, and juvenile non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So what can the laser do? Remember, the Zorona is a 635 continue, well, it's a 635 wavelength with a continuous beam. So the modulation of LPS, because uh, modulation of LPS is, is important because LPS leads to the NF-kappa B signaling pathway, which is a signaling transducer pathway, which ultimately leads to the release of interleukins and cytokines. 635 was actually shown to lead to a decrease in the expression of HSP27 phosphorylation, NF-kappa B, COX-2 COX pathway, all inflammatory, reactive oxygen species, and also anything relating to LPS. So the conclusion was a huge takeaway in that the mechanism by 635 uh, wavelength modulates LPS, which induces NF-kappa B via the HSP27 heat shock, wave pro heat shock protein 27 inflammation. So lasers working at a gut level we call that photobiomimics. So for me, my take, laser for gut health is very simple. Non-thermal laser helps conditions such as IBS, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, and of course, leaky gut. Photobiomodulation, and again, Kate and Chloe and Simon and Vanessa all have my article on photobiomimics. Um, it was a lead article, actually one article a year in chiropractic economics, a journal that we uh, a journal that I write in, in a leading chiropractic journal. So let's go through photobiomodulation of the microbiome, which you will get if you apply the Zorona to the gut region. The aim of the study was to determine if photobiomodulation could influence the microbiome of the mice. Uh, mice had abdomen um, exposed with red laser. They had single or multiple doses over a two-week period. The takeaway was significant difference in, in the microbial diversity between the photobiomodulation and the sham. So the takeaway was, if this is confirmed in humans, which we're seeing now in my office and other offices alike, the possibility exists for photobiomodulation therapy to be used as an adjunct therapy in treatment of obesity and other lifestyle-related disorders, such as cardiovascular and neurogenic diseases. So the takeaway was, photobiomodulation can remediate mitochondrial dysfunction in gut neurons, reinstating the bidirectional communication between the gut-brain axis. Photobiomodulation was shown to rebalance the microbiome 400 times. Photobiomodulation was able to do so by decreasing the inflammatory process by reducing oxidative stress, cytokines, and actually changing the phenotype of the macrophage. Macrophage 1 is a health-promoting macrophage that has the right intent just to pick up debris. Macrophage 2, when it's primed, eats everything. So it can, the laser can flick the switch to allow the macrophages, the Pac-Man, eat the bad stuff and leave the good material there. So let's go through these blood tests. And let me hope to make it quite um, evocative so you understand what's going on. LPS, one month of after um, doing the Zorona, there was a 52% decrease in LPS. Three months later, the patient was already done. And this is one of the big takeaways about our conia laser. It does a great job in the time of treatment, but does an even better time afterwards because the laser, we all know that the body's all interconnected. The laser allows for systemic homostasis and health balance when applied to human beings. So three months later, there was a decrease of 78% of LPS. And six months later, continued 82. I only used the laser for one month in this protocol. Zonulin, there was a decrease from, you know, treatment one month, 50%, three months, 70, six months, 82%. Actomycin, 42 in the first month, 60 in three months, 72 in the patients that I studied six months later. 
IgG continue to decrease IgG. You don't want these large numbers of antibodies because too much IgG, as we all know, can lead us down a path of autoimmunity. So 36% decrease uh, month one, 78% decrease three months, 64% after six months. Gas and bloating index, where they filled up, this being the patient's a subjective intake form, gas and bloating decreased 30%. And 50% three months later, again, not having treatment. Six months later, 60%. Visual analog scale started at seven. I do not use the Zorona for pain relief, but it has this beautiful side effect in that the VAS went from seven to three and stayed at two and three in six months. If you have any questions on that, I'm happy to go over that with you. So what is the Zerona Z6? It's a non-invasive fat laser. It's the first device to become FDA cleared for non-invasive fat loss. First device to really to receive whole body indication. Only aesthetic laser has an over-the-counter clearance for body contour. So let's dig into a little bit of the background and the science. You saw what I did in my office. Let's dig a little bit more. So how does it work? That's what everybody asked. Here you have a fit uh, filled fat cell. Fat cells, by the way, are depositories for toxin. The laser is able to induce a temporary pore. The pore causes triglycerides and fatty acids to seep out. The fat cell shrinks. So I call it like popping the zit. So you empty and you collapse the adipose cell and the contents. So on the left, this is the effect of photoporosis. The effect of the Zorona laser has on fat cells. Take a look. You're emulsifying a group of fat cells under the Zorona laser on the left. When you move to the right, thousands of adipose cells are emptied of their fatty debris and a slimming effect occurs. You can't lose a fat cell. Once you once you have 18, you can't lose them. And like liposuction, when you take them off, they go somewhere else. And like liposuction, when you take it out, you confuse the body. The body wants to know that the fat cells are there if they ever need them for storage and you turn on all your hunger hormones like relic. So this doesn't occur, one of the big takeaways, this does not occur when you apply the Zorona to people because there's no downtime, there's no damage to the fat cell. So the real science behind the Zorona body slimming, there's a transitory pore forming, emulsified fatty debris leaking out of the cell, empty and collapsed adipose cell. So where does the fat go? It's a big question. Once it leaves the fat cell, it is then absorbed by the lymphatic system transported by uh, afferent lymph vessels to lymph nodes, broken down safely by macrophages, which get a positive activation from the laser in the gut, transported to the circulatory system and can be used as fuel. So yeah, you wanna have a Zorona treatment and then go work out, kumbaya. Similar process to body's use of fat as fuel. The body has a natural system in place to transport and degrade triglycerides without inducing any adverse outcomes. Lymphatic stimulation. The lymph system is not a pump driven. It actually relies on movement and vibration. The system is like flowing a river, shifting debris away from a specific area. Once the fat is released, the lymphatic system is responsible for removing all lipid debris. So how much do you really lose with the Zorona? Well, the average study, not in mine, but the average study done without the nutrition I'm going to recommend and all these other adjuncts just by applying the laser was 3.5 inches. To lose 3.5 inches, you'd have to burn 12,600 calories, which equates to 61 cheeseburgers, 72 cartons of ice cream, and 2.3 liters of pure fat. Or if you wanted to burn it, you need to swim for 40 hours straight. Good luck. Play tennis for 21 hours straight, sounds like a little more fun, and jog for 17 hours. I'm shaking my head because I'm not a jogger, I like sprints. So let's look at the common areas of concern. You wanna remove fat, reduce inches, slim stubborn fat from the tummy, the area right in here, and I'll show you, I'm gonna do a um, demo, arms, hips, thighs, buttocks, and those infamous for men love handles, and for women those love handles more in the hips, if you will. Just remember, this should resonate with you. Zero pain, zero surgery, zero downtime. So let's look at my Zorona program. Very simple. We did measurement sites. We did four measurement sites for males, six measurement sites for females. The male measurement sites were the right and the left arm, the waist, and the flank and the hips. The female was the right and the left arm, waist, hips, right and left thigh. So my treatment protocol, very simple. 
to, to what I did, and you're gonna have a difference of opinion with everybody. What I did was twice a week for four weeks. We did measurements after the eighth treatment and then one week later, which you'll see. You can do it once a week for six weeks. You can do it three times a week for two weeks. What I did in this study was, cause I'm in New York, everybody likes it a little quicker. And a month was a good protocol for me. I did it twice a week for four weeks. So here are my nutritional supplements. And I strongly recommend adding the nutritional component. Adding the nutritional component will help with outcomes because as you'll see, the nutritional um, suggestions are pointed at the detox, they're pointed at gut support, they're pointed at um, getting fat and triglycerides to move out, added fiber and the such. But more so than that, not only does it help, but it's a great periphery to building your practice because now you have patients who are using a fee-for-service nutrition. So I convert patients from my chiropractic into my Zorona, my functional medicine rehab into my Zorona, and sometimes from Zorona to any one of those two facets. And Zorona really feeds the nutritional functional medicine world. So here's some of the nutritional supplements. Number one, detox formula. Number two, a probiotic formula. Number three, resolve inflammation. So I do multiple formulas to resolve inflammation. I'm a big believer in increasing bile bile acid or an ox bile formula. Acetyl L-carnitine works well because it really takes triglycerides. And then optional, I would recommend any kind of fiber. Fiber really helps bind a lot of the toxins that are coming out and uh, helps bind some of the um, cholesterols coming out of the fat cells. You also have optional, Some I use an in-body and I use an in-body, I'll show you some of the uh, stats. The in-body does a great job of talking about body composition, but visceral fat. Visceral fat's a key component. Laser, Zorona, decreases visceral fat. Visceral fat is fat of the viscera, which is the most inflammatory fat that you could have. You could also use a waist sleeve. You could take the measurements at the waist, hips, arms, and thighs. We take uh, measurements at the first visit before the fifth and the eighth session. We do do pictures taken before and after last treatment. You can exercise. The only thing we ask you to do is do not drink any alcohol or caffeine before the treatment. Any coffee that you drink during the day, add three ounces of water, drink two to four liters of water daily, jump rope, use a percussor, we'll show you the percussor. I also have in the picture on the right side, a lifetime vibe, it's like a vibration plate. And that's all really going pointed towards outcome. So total inches lost. Here we see these are all pretty much middle-aged men going from age 43 to 63. After the first, uh, after the eighth visit, you see some differences, but you see 5.5 inches going to six inches one week later. So he didn't get treated, he still lost another half inch. 8.25 going to 11.75, man, he was really kicking it after the eighth visit. Four inches to six inches and one person held four and three quarter inches. So three out of four dramatically increased. And that's what you're gonna see. You're gonna still see an increase after the stoppage. So the average was, the average loss after eight visits was 5.5 and four sites for men and virtually seven inches one week later. That's dramatic. There was a one patient and in any of my studies that were not happy about the outcome. Females, age 43, 60, 53, 55. Women also, there were six sites. So 4.5 inches after the eighth visit, one week later, 5.75. Nine inches after the eighth week, 12 inches, dramatic. 12 and a half inches whew, to 13 inches and 7.75 to 8.5 inches. Who wouldn't want those loss of inches in their body? So the average weight loss was about eight and a half inches after eight visits for the ladies, six sites, and almost 10 inches one week later. Women were smiling. So total inches lost in six weeks. There was another study in two, with two patients, age 40 and 46. You saw a total loss after the sixth visit of 6.1 inches. Two weeks later, still added about another inch. For the women, they were in their 30, so it was 9.5 inches after the sixth, and they had about another half inch increase two weeks later. So let's look at some pictures that Coney was nice enough to share with me. Let's do some of these before and after pictures. Number one, Zerona, take a look at the top woman, and you can see on the left to the right, a tremendous change in the tightness. She looks much thinner on the right. The one in the bottom, it's a wholesale change. She went to, should be covered to almost a bikini physique just in the Zorona. And, um, you know, a lot of times a picture is worth a thousand words, as we like to say. 
here's a guy on the top in the center. You can see that he's got the little um, spare tire. And by the time he's done, he's, he's flat. He's ready to start getting a six pack. And the one on the bottom, the before and after, again, you can really see a lot of almost like that cellulite, even though as Zorona's not for cellulite, the emerald is for cellulite. You see a tremendous tightening of the turgor of the skin. And some ladies on the top, you're seeing before and after, you're seeing a, a more hourglass in the waistline and definitely more of a tightness. And again, for the young lady um, with the um, pink outfit, if you will, before and after a dramatic change once again. I think this guy with the Biarelli on the top really was a, uh, a dramatic change to a more uh, sinewy looking kind of person. And the lady in the bottom really lost a lot of her fat mass. So you don't really have to follow me to the office. I'm going to get one of my staff members to help me. I'll be waiting there. So you guys don't have to walk us through, Kate, because I cannot see uh, if you guys can see me. So I'm going to lay down because I want to get myself nice and lean. Okay. And Stephanie is going to apply the laser to me. So the first one is we've got, can you turn it on for a split second? They call it the Zerona 6 or the Z6 because there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six. They're very movable arms. You can see. So if you have someone who's a little wider or more corpulent, you have the distance that you can cover. If somebody's a little thinner or narrower, you can get it in. You want to be about two inches away from uh, the body part. You're going to do 20 minutes on my back in a supine position. I'm going to flip like a pancake and do 40 minutes um, in a face, uh, tw another 20 minutes, excuse me, in a face down position. So you'll see that you're covering a lot of surface area. Steph, do you want to put it on me? You get those love handles, man. Work on those love handles. So you see she's making, why well, not that? I hope anybody didn't see that. So now she's applying it to me and I'm in this area. You know, I, could, I, I can wear goggles if you want, not. This is a, a Zorona um, specific room, and in this Zorona specific room, you can have music, you can dim the lights. There's a lot of different things that you can do. Now, the beauty of the Zorona is right now I'm losing um, or I'm improving my body contour. I'm losing the contents of the fat cells. This is a continuous light, 17.5 milliwatts per diode. Kate, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I can answer them right now. I can. Yeah, right, yeah, Rob, there are a couple of questions. The first one is, how many times were you treating patients in the month to see the changes in their blood? All those changes were just eight visits. Sorry, then, eight visits? Eight visits, twice a week for four weeks. Okay. And that's, a, yeah. that's a dramatic change. I mean, we all know that blood markers are extremely objective. Um, you know, the VIS scores that we did, they're subjective. Those are patient subjectivity. Um, that said, I mean, I was astonished at the blood marker. So what it really shows and what it um, exemplifies and highlights is that the laser works at a systemic level. And it's very exciting because we don't sell or push the laser, the Z6, as a health benefit but you're not only getting the body contour, you're getting the health benefit, and you're also getting like a mental health benefit. So a lot of people post COVID got a lot of extra, you know, mass, they got heavier and they're depressed and they don't think they can get over the hump, but the Zorona and the application of the Zorona enables them to lose some inches so they can spot on their new lifestyle plan. Do you have another question, Kate? I do, yes. Um... If you are not two inches away from the skin, does this prevent the laser from working effectively? No, I just I just believe from the data that I've read in having empirical research that that two inch period or space approximately, so what's about five centimeters um, or so, is the right space. Could you put it right on? Absolutely, but the only thing you lose when you put it on um, if you guys can see, you can, I'm sure you can see because the color of my skin. Yeah. If I go like that, or let me come up, I need a bigger stomach. 
It's just right here. My whole staff is making fun of me, Kate. Tell Simon he owes me a coffee. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, bear with me. Um, so we're going back to the blood related question here. Could you use an EVRL to get those changes in the blood? So the changes you discussed mm -hmm. earlier. Can I use the EVRL to get the changes in the blood in place of the Zorona 6? Yes. I'm pausing. I'll, I'll tell you. I will say that you'll get some blood changes. I wouldn't bank on it. You'll get the changes in the 405 because it's more powerful and it's got more diodes. Um, and I've seen blood changes and the changes that I've studied are for the gut and also for the lower back. I've seen changes in heart rate variability with the EVRL. And now I'm, you know, I flipped over. So you're seeing it applied to me over here. So same deal, 20 minutes face up, 20 minutes face down. And, and then one final question I have here is, can the laser help with cellulite? The Emerald, and you may want to go or have them speak to Vanessa. The Emerald, as I recall, is for cellulite. In theory, we're not allowed to say this works for cellulite. However, in my office, I'll say this, I have seen changes in cellulite, but it does not have a clearance in the US for that. Okay, that's great, thank you. And that's all the questions we have at the moment. Okay, so face down, 20 minutes face down. So the positioning is super easy. Staff or any of my uh, key staff members, everybody's trained in the ability to apply the Zorona. 20 minute um, alarm, beeps off, switch them, you know, cook them on each side. So the sessions are close to an hour, so um, can you pause it? And I guess I'm gonna get on my side and we're gonna take a Procosta, which a Coney South, I, I just know the position. Let's see if I can, yeah. And I put my arm up and Steph's gonna do it. She's gonna turn it on extra hard and extra vibration to make sure all my length, that's just a joke guys. Can't you see my sardonic grin? So everything she does is <laughs> it's put, I'm fine. It's pointed towards going to take it to the heart. So again, it's vibration. So she would do the you know, different parts on both sides of the body. Um, in addition to that, I've got a vibration plate. Some people are a little more athletic, believe it or not, and they go, I have a big room and they jump rope. One of the key things is to get the vibration afterwards. The percussor does a great job. Incidentally, the percussor, is so effective the percussor also um is great in a musculoskeletal light any questions on that uh bear with me um if someone was particularly large would you ever keep the laser on in one place for 40 minutes instead of turning them I'm over sorry. I was moving my seat to sit down in front of it. Um, could you repeat the question? Sorry, yeah. If someone uh, was particularly large, so if you had a larger patient, would you keep the laser on in one place for 40 minutes instead of turning them? Uh, I still would turn them, but we do emphasize. So for instance, how can I explain this? Uh, some people don't wanna lose any of their mass on their buttocks. So we'll position it in a different way. So some guys don't want to lose any size in their chest. So we'll keep it below. So you can fine tune it. It's versatile enough in the way you move the arms. And I think that's the big thing. I'm going to get up over here. Hopefully you can see me. Look at how these arms can move. And the depth, you know, so you can get real close and you can avoid certain areas. So if somebody's got like a big belly, and they're flat on their back, not just lying flat on their back, but the back is flat with not too much out of pose. Could you? Sure. Can you miss certain spots? Yes. Can you go to the arm and the shoulder? Some people have more flappy type skin there. Absolutely. 
Great, thank you. Okay, so I'll, I'll move ahead, see if we have some more questions. We're forging ahead. So there's Rona, non-invasive fat loss laser. Number one, it has gut health. For me, again, I was very surprised at this, but I'm very happy. The gut is the epicenter of your health. 80% of your immune cells are in your gut. It's where your macro and micronutrients are absorbed. So when you can couple it with a body contour and a gut health, it really makes it a, uh, a dual purpose modality. Body contour results. I mean, just the body contour results on its own were great. You saw that we lost anywhere from five to 10 inches, depending on how heavy the person was, their uh, gender and everything like that. We have a very high, very, very, very high satisfaction rate and, a, and an equally high uh, reoccurrence rate where they want to come back. Also, you're going to get new chiral patients or new patients in general. So people are coming in my office that wouldn't have come to, and I'm going to use the word chiro, wouldn't have come to a chiropractor before. And they're coming in for the Zorona. They love the results. They, they love the office. They love the staff being so pleasant. They love the nutritional protocols. They become a new chiro patient. So here you have something that's working for yourself. Now, everybody knows I lecture. I come out there four times a year. The Zorona is still going. It's not a doctor supervised protocol. It's an over-the-counter body contour. So you can actually have your intern, your college intern, do all of it on Saturday when you're not there. So that that's a big thing. You know, it saves you from adjusting people, whether you're injecting people, whatever you're doing. And lastly, new nutrition patients, the fee-for-service people, the nutrition which people need so very much. And the reason that they realize that they need the nutrition is they realize that that nutrition is the key marker. And once they've lost the inches, the conversation afterwards is, hey, obviously you don't want to take a step back, you want to forge forward. So having said that, that they can forge forward, here are some of the lifestyle changes, here are some of the nutritional changes and such. And ROI, you know, I, I don't want to talk ROI too much, but people always ask me about ROI, return on investment. And the ROI on the Zorona and all the lasers, it's probably the highest. And sometimes Simon doesn't want me to say that, but it just truly is. And the reason it, it's the highest in my estimation is I don't have to be there. Do you have any questions now, Kate? No, there's no further questions at this stage. Okay, so here's the Pierre resistance, body slimming results, patient satisfaction. This was supplied to me with 130 people from Arconia. The existing Zorona providers were surveyed on patient satisfaction, and the results stated that 93% of patients were satisfied with their Zorona treatment. Enough said. Mine's about at 96%, but you know, I'm one office. So when you with these numbers, you're not losing anybody. You're gaining a community. So Vincent Van Gogh once said, um, your profession is not what brings you home your weekly paycheck. Your profession is what you put here on earth to do with such passion and such intensity that it becomes spiritual and calling. So in reference to that, we're here to help with nutrition. We're here to help with lifestyle. We're here to make a health impact. This is a definitive consideration and adjunct into your practice armamentarium. It helps with a myriad of symptomologies and it's very definitively helping with body contour. It's based on science and we now have objective markers to back it up and none more objective, believe it or not, than the tape measure. So let me open up. If anybody has any questions, please feel free. I try to answer questions during it because I'm, I'm very respectful of your time. I know it's dinner time or post dinner time or whatever you may have. Anybody's interested in getting in touch with me, feel free. I've got a laser group at the bottom. Please come join, follow us on Facebook. Um, next week, we're gonna have a big Facebook Live. Uh, Kate will tell you how to get in touch with Aconia out where you guys are and all that's going on. And if you have any interest in this room, she's gonna tell you how to you know, reach out. So I'm gonna turn it back over to you, Kate, for a moment. Yeah, brilliant. Sorry, Rob, there was one last question. Can we just pick that one up before we leave? Um, and it was, 
Uh, when you mention neutral protocol, are you talk, uh, taking people's diet diary for the week and how can I implement this into my practice? So basically, okay. are you asking the patients to provide their dietary di uh, diary? I'm going to be very specific and you may be surprised. When they do the Zorona, I do not look at what they eat and I do not ask them to change any foods. All those outcomes were strictly laser and laser supplements. And the reason is that most people who come in don't want to change their diet. They want the Zorona. They will change their diet when they get the results with the Zorona. And that is impactful. It's unfortunate, but it's impactful. Just the supplements I recommended, that's all they take. When they're done, I sit them down and I say, okay, here's what you lost. Here's the change in body composition. Here's the test in visceral fat. If there's blood labs, we talk about the blood labs. You know, would you, you know, here's my suggestion once a month. Here's my suggestion. I, I have a program for uh, weight loss. I have uh, continued supplementation. I can take more blood tests, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the follow up is the critical element, which really spoke to the idea of more nutrition patients than more chiral patients. And if you will, if I'm allowed to say the ROI, how do you integrate it? Well, you know what? I never advertise this. I do have a poster outside my door. I'm in a medical building and people do come. I never advertised it. However, some people will say that I have in that I've done a couple of Instagram lives like Vanessa is doing today and such like that, but I've never paid any money for a flyer or anything like that because this is one of the things that word of mouth will just run rampant. And sometimes people don't want to tell everybody how they're losing weight. People get a little funny that way. So, um, Kate, I hope I answered that question, but that may have stimulated some other questions. Yeah, no, you certainly did answer that question. That isn't, uh, hold on, there's one more just come through. Um, so, are these supplements you mentioned, such as a detox formula, a tablet? Uh, that one is, a, yeah, I think everyone, I'll go back, I think everyone is a tablet except for the fiber. And you can get the fiber in a tablet or a capsule. Brilliant. Okay, thank you. And no further questions. Uh, yeah, no, no further questions. Cool. All right. Well, I got it in within the hour. I really appreciate everybody taking time, whether it's live or Memorex. We'll be seeing you soon. Um, I know I'll be back in the UK in the first week in September. There'll be some other webinars. And um, Kate, I'll turn it over to you. That's great. Thanks, Rob. Um, thanks everyone as always um this session has been recorded and will be sent out in the next 24 to 48 hours if anyone does have any questions or queries in the meantime please do drop them through to inquiries at aconia emeacom and we'll come back to you as soon as possible thanks everyone bye